Okay, so I'm going to start some videos now looking at assemblies. Um, so what are assemblies? Uh, most of the objects we've made so far in, in Onshape have been single parts. So they've been um, just one lump of, of model, if you like, like this one here. We've had a, an extrusion and we've subtracted some shapes from that extrusion, but it's just one object. We could get a piece of wood and create that. Um, in the real world, most uh, projects, products rather, most things around us are made up of more than one part though they're made up of assemblies so what we need to do is look at how we can um, add bits together to make uh, assembled objects now there's a couple of ways of doing that first what i'm going to show you is through a process called bottom up modeling so bottom up modeling it's the way we usually start putting assemblies together it's the way that inventor is kind of set up to work on chips a bit different, but we can still do it that way. Now, bottom up modeling uh, involves us gathering all the parts, all the um, bits of our assembly, and then fixing them together. So it's a bit like a Lego model. You open the box, you get all the bricks out, you get the ones you need, and then you join them together, connect them up. So that's bottom up modeling. So in on shape, what that means is we, we make a part here. Um, I've made some more parts in this part of the studio here. So I've got four little shapes I'm going to put in. And what I want to do now is create an assembly and drop those all into it and, and fasten them together. In on shape, you can see if you're a part studio or an assembly, because of the little icon here, the part studio, you've got these little separate blocks. And then this one here, we've got these two blocks joined together. When you first start on shape, you end up usually with one um, part studio and an assembly tab. If you need to add more, you can do it here through the add element section. So create assembly. This one here, I've just renamed so you can right click on the tab and, and rename it so you know what you're looking at. So here we have a, an empty assembly. So I need to drop in the block and the shapes. Well, I'm going to do that. I go to the insert button up here. And I've got options to select any of the documents that are open in this in this document. So I've got some other bits that I've created. Or I can go to another document and get something totally separate. I can also put in assemblies. So if you've got an, uh, an existing assembly that you've made, and you want to add that into another assembly. So like an, a, a sub assembly, maybe you've got um, some uh, a pulley or, or, or some some bits that are joined together and you want to create a, a bigger part from it. So I'm going to start with the blocks. I'm going to grab that one. Uh, it drops it into my space. It locks it to the origin, um, but it's not actually fixed. I can move it. Now I'm going to Let's go and do that. I'm going to start the first object that you bring in. Usually is the thing that everything else is connected to. So I've, I've not started by bringing in one of these shapes. That would that would have been a bit wouldn't have been very helpful. Um, I'd have to everything would have to connect to that shape. I've brought in the, this main part, and I'm now going to fix it. So I right click up here, I fix. Get a little lock in icon there, and if I try and drag it now, it's move. It's 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 fixed. I can't move it. So that's now a good thing, a good, a good sort of state to be in to begin to build the rest of it. So I need to add another bit. So insert again. This time all my parts are over here in this document or in this part studio called shapes. And I've got four of them. Now you notice I can drop down and I can expand and I can see any other parts that are in a part studio. Um, so if I drop down there and just say grab a cube it's going to bring the cube across and I can click and drop it into my into my assembly um, it's not locked I can still move it around if I click on it in fact I can um, I'm just going to close that so if I click on it I can get these axes I can move it a bit more precisely in certain directions um, and I can also um, angle it as well if I want to so I can sort of move things roughly in the right place but I'd be hard pushed to get that right into that spot. Um, so I need to use a, a, a constraint. Um, on shape is mainly set up for actually using these assemblies uh, to animate stuff or to, to check how things are going to move when they're put together. So we've got gears and, and um, screws, we've got sliders and pins and stuff. So it's not really set up just to join things together, but we have got a few tools we can use. And the only one you really need to worry about is the fasten mate. So if I click on that one there, um, what this does is it looks for surfaces or lines, and it gives you all these sort of handles, all these 
corners and midpoints really um, we're going to use that midpoint there so I've clicked on that midpoint there and we're going to find another corresponding midpoint at the bottom of the circle sorry bottom of the um, the, the square shape to join it to now so that's locked those two surfaces together you'll see that it has done it um, so it's facing the wrong way we've got a few adjustments here that we can use so this one here is going to flip it so that will put it the right way around um, we can rotate it which you can't see on this example I'll show you that in a minute and we can also offset things so if I put that to a 10 it's going to give us a space and if I make it a minus 10 it's going to send it the other way um, so you can control where it, it, it's fixed so if maybe I wanted this to be slightly further in that direction for some reason I can move it about so you can control the uh, on offsets you can control the, the, the flip and you can also um, rotate it as well now so there's one so if I was to continue that I'd need to now go to insert and select the other shapes here but having said that I can select that top row the whole group and it'll bring everything that is in that part of studio across okay so I brought them all in I don't need my cylinder so I'm just going to delete that one um, but now I can continue I can keep going and I can use my fasten mate to um, get stuff to connect sometimes it's awkward finding the bottom of the hole um, now if I put the bottom of the hole to the bottom of this shape you'll see that it'll it'll flip in it will go in the right place it's not gone upside down so it keeps the orientation now this time here if I hit the orientate reorientate axis button you can see I've rotated that around so we can if yours maybe had a feature on it and it came in facing the wrong way you could use that tool just to rotate stuff about or if you've got a, maybe a, a polygon like this one here so that is bottom-up modeling if I keep going and put these other two parts in I've started with all the bits and I've then joined them together so bottom-up modeling so that's one way if you've already created your um, your your parts or if you've maybe got several different assemblies you want to join together that's the way you would do it you would bring them in and you would use the fasten mate to secure them in place next I'm going to go on and talk to you about a slightly different way of doing it so in the previous video I showed you how to create an assembly out of different parts using a process called bottom-up modeling so getting all our parts together and then building them up into an assembly using um, a fasten mate so using a constraint to lock them together um, sometimes that's the best way to do a uh, an assembly um, it certainly gives you lots of flexibility allows you to bring in um, other parts from uh, maybe from other people to connect it into your assembly if someone else has made this bit you can insert it so sometimes we need to bring in parts from somewhere else and assemble them together there's another way of doing things um, which is called top-down modeling and that's what I'm going to show you now so on the shape really is set up for top-down modeling uh, when you start these new documents you're given a part studio and the part studio has actually got two shapes in it and the reason for that is that this area here is designed to create more than one part within it uh, so <clears throat> over over here I actually created three different um, shapes sorry four different shapes and it's done them all as totally separate parts um, okay uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this studio space to create our entire assembly now for a part like this it's very straightforward uh, all I want to do is I want to create these shapes I've already drawn these shapes so what top down modeling does is it allows us to create new parts using geometry that we've already drawn in another part so we're using these shapes here and we're going to use them to create a new part so if I start with that I've just highlighted that bottom of that square hole I can just go straight to my extrude button and it's going to pick up that shape and it is going to create a 3d shape from an extrusion now coming up here we can see we've got different options we've used the add that's going to basically merge that extrusion with this first block remove we've done that that's how we're going to subtract parts from a shape so to create these holes we used a shape 
uh, and extract sketch and then we extrude remove or extrude subtracted that shape if I just hit that one there you can see that's just merged that block into that shape that's not what I want the other option that I think I've mentioned before and not done anything with is this one here called new uh, and what that does is that is going to create that extrusion from that bottom right bottom rectangle up the height I've set but it's going to create it as a new part if I do that look I've now got a different color and in the parts list here I've actually got another part if I hide that look I can see I've got a complete shape it's not just a bit that's sticking out it's the whole extrusion so if I want to create a new part from geometry it's as simple as that even better if I wanted to create the other three I can select all three shapes extrude remember to select new and then when I OK that look they've all popped up they're different shapes and I've got these parts down here now um, the parts in this process you can rename them and it's probably worth doing that if you are that was actually the square I think wasn't it um, if you're going to be using them either to bring in shapes into an assembly later or if you're going to be using a um, rendering software you might need to it's easier to sometimes to see that that's a cube rather than part three if you're selecting it to put a color on it it may be hard to work out which is part three so it's worth naming them in this in this space here so um, top down modeling looks incredibly simple why do we not always do that well often that is that is the the, the way to do it um, it can get quite messy and complicated if you have a difficult shape or a difficult um, assembly because um, the, these parts are linked and sometimes that's what you want and sometimes it's not what you want I'll show you what I mean if I was to go back and change in my um, in my base if I come back here look let's say I wanted to change this uh, shape here to be um, I don't know let's make it 12 okay let's make that a little bit bigger so that's got bigger which means that when I finish this my extrusion will go bigger but if you watch what also happens is that this shape has got bigger because that shape is linked to the hole size of the hole the shape of the hole any change I make to the to the hole is going to update the shape of the block so it can be a really powerful um, way of building a model because everything's linked and it can be updated but equally if you get something wrong you may make a change somewhere in your model and everything goes a bit screwy because it's linked and you, you can't maybe work out where simple models like this though much easier to make it in top-down modeling